Well, hello there, good people, and welcome. I am so pleased that you are joining us here on this beautiful day that the Lord God has made here at Kensington Community Church for our worship service this day. Uh, on this beautiful day, which is world, you know what? Actually, there is someone I want to invite uh, to join me uh, in leading us in our welcome and welcoming you to church this day. So give me one second. Well, now that I've got my trusted companion to help me welcome you to church on this beautiful day that the Lord God has made, it is the day of World Communion Sunday. It is the, the festival of St. Francis. It is the blessing of the animal service. And it is my prayer that you and yours are safe and well this day and, and that you're taking some time this day to, to lift up a prayer of thanksgiving to God for all the ways in which animals have been blessed and are a blessing to us. Uh, Willow and I uh, welcome you to Kensington Community Church and are so pleased that you're joining us in worship today. And we want you to know that no matter who you are or where you come from or wherever you are in your journey through life, that you are loved unconditionally and extravagantly and steadfastly by God, that you are affirmed openly for who God created you to be here at Kensington Community Church. And we hope that you feel the presence of the risen Christ in your midst, don't we, Willow? Uh, there are ways for you to plug into the life and ministry of our church as we continue our mission during times such as these. We invite you to go to the front page of our website, kensingtonucc.com. It's there that you can make uh, a, a, an offering, a gift, a tithe for the ongoing ministry and mission of our congregation. It's there also that you can download all of the prayers and announcements uh, for, and, and see how you can plug into the many ways in which we are trying to be people of good news and hope in this, in this time and in our community and, and around the world. But of course, there are always things that we would hope that you would be a little bit more aware of and focus on and, 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 and know what's coming up uh, around the corner. So please, sisters and brothers, take a moment and watch and listen to this morning's announcements. Hello, and welcome to Kensington Community Church in this week's announcements for October 3rd. Rachel's House provides services for homeless women in downtown San Diego, and KCC continues to provide one meal a month for their night shelter. In October, however, we are providing two meals for Rachel's House on the 24th and 31st, so we will need twice as many salads, fruits, drinks, dessert, and help. Please let Sarah know if you have any questions or can help in any way. You can find her information in the weekly chimes. Starting this week on Wednesday, October 6th, you're invited to join a six-week seminar led by Pastor Daryl around managing communal trauma and the spiritual benefit of the spiritual practice of contemplation. He will be using a resource by Dr. Reverend Barbara Holmes. You're encouraged to purchase the book ahead of time and begin reading and sampling the contemplation exercises. If you are interested in joining, please contact Rosie at office at kensingtonucc.com. Join us on Sunday, October 24th at both morning services to celebrate the 10th anniversary of KCC becoming an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. Come hear stories of how KCC became an open and affirming church and be inspired by how we can continue to widen our circle of welcome and understanding of what it means to be open and affirming in the days and years to come. A COVID safe reception will be held after the 1030 service. We look forward to seeing you all there. There is always so much happening in the life of our congregation. Be sure to check the weekly chimes or KCC website for Zoom links and more information. Have a blessed week all. Friends, Kindred, we begin our worshipful, oh, okay. Three, two, one. Friends, we begin our worship service today formally around the table of Christ. You are invited, if you're worshiping with us from home, to go and grab the, the bread of the earth and the fruit of the vine in which you would like to use for our communion service this day. On this commu World Communion Sunday, on the Festival of St. Francis, on the Blessing of the Animals Sunday, we are reminded that we are connected 
with our sisters and brothers, with our kindred and neighbors across Christianity from denominations that seem very similar to ours to those that are very different. We celebrate the, the, the common meal of Christ that, that Christ shared with his, his brethren, with his friends, with his disciples on that fateful night. But we are also reminded on this festival of St. Francis and on the blessing of the animals that there is room around this table, not only for the human children of God, but for the non-human children of God as well. For as St. Francis himself, the, saint, the patron saint of animals reminded us that he preached the gospel to the animals and he shared in a Eucharistic meal with them on a regular basis. And so we find a place around this table for our non-human kindred as well. So we gather this day to be reminded of the grace and compassion, love and justice of God, that we are called to walk humbly upon this earth and to care for one another. We do this because Christ reminded us on that fateful night when he gathered with his disciples around the table to share in a meal of liberation, to commemorate God's work of freeing us from all that would oppress us. During that meal, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he passed it among his disciples and friends saying, take, eat all of you, for this is my body broken for you. And then likewise, after the meal, he took the cup and he blessed it and passed it among his disciples saying, take, drink all of you, for this is the cup of the new everlasting covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And each time that you gather around this table and you eat of this bread and you drink from this cup, remember me. At home, you are invited to use whatever elements for this meal of grace that you uh, so wish to use here in the sanctuary. We will be using our COVID-safe, pre-prepared COVID, uh, communion set. We will begin by taking the piece of bread and partaking in the bread of life with a grateful heart this day. And then likewise, we will take the cup of love poured out for us this day and partake in it with a grateful heart. Friends, let us go to God in a word of prayer. Hear our humble prayer this day, O God, as we make our way around this communion table, the table of Christ where there is a place set for all of us, all of your family, human and non-human alike. We pray this day, O oh God, for our friends, the animals, especially the animals who are suffering, for any who that are being hunted or lost of deserted, frightened or hungry. We particularly pray this day for those that have become extinct due to the, 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 the efforts and the, the causes of, 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 of humanity on this earth. We pray for those who must be put to death. We entreat that all of your children this day, O oh God, human and non-human alike, would have enough to eat and that would live into your abundance, that they would know your kindness and mercy and that as we are relate to them, that we, would, that we ask for a heart of compassion and, and gentle hands and kindly words, that we would do our part this day, O oh God, to create a peaceable kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Make us, O oh, oh God, this day true friends to everyone we meet that, that we may transform strangers into friendships, that we may tr transform enemies into neighbors. May we, along with the animals that you have created in your image and blessed so good this day, share what it means to be a blessing to all of those who share in your mercy. Oh God, you hear us better than we are speaking. And it is with this hope this day that you are not only receiving, but you are active in answering our prayers for healing and wholeness, strength and comfort, peace and justice, wisdom and guidance this day. We lift up the words of our mouths and the meditations to you, uh, of our hearts to you this day, O oh God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. We pray all of this in the name of your son, who taught us to bring everything to you in prayer when he taught us these ancient and sacred words to pray. Our God who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Save us from times of trial. Deliver us from all that is evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Good morning. Our sacred story today for our blessing of the animal celebration is the story of Balaam and his donkey. It is found in the book of Numbers. I will be reading through chapter 22 and reading verses 22 through 30. Listen for the word of God for you this day, for God is still speaking. When Balaam went against God's will and decided to go and curse the Moabites, God became angry. So while Balaam was riding on his donkey, accompanied by his two servants, an angel of the Lord stood in the road as Balaam's adversary. The donkey saw the angel standing in the road with its sword drawn. So the donkey turned from the road and went into the field. Balaam struck the donkey in order to turn him back onto the road. Then the angel stood in the narrow path between the vineyards with a stone wall on each side. When the donkey saw this, it leaned against the wall and squeezed Balaam's foot against the wall. So Balaam continued to beat it. The angel persisted and crossed over and stood in a narrow place where it was not possible to turn either right or left. The donkey saw the angel and lay down underneath Balaam. Balaam became angry and beat the donkey with the rod. Then God opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you've beaten me these three times? Balaam said to the donkey, Because you've tormented me. If I had a sword in my hand, I'd kill you now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey, on whom you've often ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? Balaam said, No. Then God uncovered Balaam's eyes, and Balaam saw the angel standing in the road with a sword drawn in his hand. Then Balaam bowed low and worshipped. Here ends our reading. The word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. You know, this story is actually meant to be pretty funny. I mean, it has a talking donkey in it. Of course it's meant to be funny. This story is supposed to make us smile. We're talking about a talking donkey, a biblical Mr. Ed, a, a, an ancient version of Shrek's traveling buddy. And it's pretty hard to read this one literally as, it, as, it, as a, a real life, it actually happened event. A talking donkey doesn't happen on earth Li on everyday life, and that is not very likely to happen. But just because this story is a fable and is not actually factual doesn't mean that it not only can't be funny, but it, that it can be meaningful and that it can be truthful. Meaningful and truthful and funny is how I would describe a story that Miss Barbara told me this past week. Miss Barbara, who is our director of faith formations here at Kensington Community Church, before she was that, she was the executive director of a nonprofit that assisted folks with vision, that, that lived with vision impairment. And at her nonprofit, she often worked side by side with agencies that provided life companions to people with severe vision impairment in the form of guide dogs. Guide dogs, as you know, are incredible animals that are so sweet and loving, so smart, and so incredibly well-trained. Guide dogs are trained to stop their human from entering areas that could be potentially dangerous, like, like crossing a street when traffic is oncoming. Even if the human wants to go, 
the guide dog is trained to stop the human and keep the human safe. And Miss Barbara knew someone at her nonprofit who was blessed to have a guide dog companion in their life. In this instance, it happened to be a man and he was walking one day down a sidewalk path that he and his guide dog had walked down hundreds of times before. He knew the sidewalk like he knew the back of his hand, every crack, every place where it was broken and jagged, where it curved and where it turned. And on one particular day, as he was walking down this sidewalk with his guide dog right by his side, his guide dog stopped just dead in its tracks at a place where they normally never had to stop. The man gave the guide dog a command to, to walk forward, kip up. That's, if you know, that's the universal command for let's go, kip up. So, but the dog didn't move. And so he said it again, kip up. And again, the guide dog didn't move. Now the man was kind of doing that manly thing that sometimes happens. We get frustrated and angry when our animals don't do what we are asking them to do. There was no reason in his mind that his guide dog should have stopped. They were right there in the middle of a sidewalk, a sidewalk that they knew so well. They weren't at a crosswalk or something like that. And yet the dog, the guide dog would not budge. It would not move forward. So fine, the man said out loud. And he decided to take a step forward without his guide dog leading him. And he stepped right into wet cement. Sometimes our animals get it so much more than we do. They are our guide dogs, both for those living with vision impairment and those of us living with some, let's say, spiritual impairment. They teach us how to be more wise, how to be more loving, how to be more just. Balaam, he is a seer. That's literally his job title, a seer. And there is actually non-biblical accounts of a seer named Balaam, suggesting that he is actually a real person in our stories and numbers. But even though this tale may be about a real person who really lived in history, that does not make this a true story. It's a fable, meaning that it has meaning, but it's not factual. It's truthful without being real. And while it's believable that humans can sometimes train their voices to speak like a donkey, it's not believable that a donkey can speak like a human being. And the story kind of plays on this idea. A donkey acts humanely while the human acts, well, let's say it together, like an ass. Balaam is actually portrayed in the Bible in both a good and a bad light. We mostly hear the bad light in today's story. And our talking donkey tale is dropped right in the middle of a story about Balaam doing some good things on behalf of God. Balaam is a human. And so like all of us, sometimes does not act out of his best self. He's fallible just like me, just like you. Humans are humans, as we know. And even the best of us sometimes get it wrong. But that's enough about Balaam. This story, this sermon is not about Balaam. That's enough about him. I want to focus on the donkey. And she is a hero and a great reminder of all the good our animals do for us on a day-to-day -day basis, whether they be our helpmates or guide dogs or pals, whether they be our, our, our pets or our beast of burden. Balaam's donkey carries Balaam on her back and we learn from her that she has done this practically all of Balaam's life. Am I not your donkey, which you have ridden all of your life to this day, she asks. And until this instance in this story, she has always complied with Balaam's command. But as Miss Barb read for us today, the donkey refuses Balaam's command three times in one day, and she puts herself at great risk by doing so. Why did she refuse to do what Balaam was asking her to do? because she saw something that the seeing human could not see, a threat. And she puts her own life at risk for another. That has a very spiritual word to it, sacrifice. As the angel tells Balaam, the donkey saw me and turned away from me three times. And if it had not turned away from me, surely just now I would have killed you, but I would have let the donkey live. 
While Balaam gets all abusive and claims that if he had had a sword, he would have killed the donkey for failing to follow orders, the angel turns out to actually have a sword on him and does not use it on Balaam precisely because the donkey sacrifices itself by not complying with the abusive orders of Balaam. This story reminds us that humans are not always right. And Balaam is an example of how our hubris as human beings and our need to be so dominant over animals can cause us to be quite hurtful and abusive. And when we are hurtful and abusive, we often justify our bad behavior in the name of being human, of being superior to the animals in every way. And yet God, and yet God uses this so-called lowly beast to keep Balaam alive and to humble him. Humans do not always know what is best. And our fellow animals and our fellow kindred in the animal kingdom have such great value to their creator God. They are actually blessed to be very good, just like we humans are in the story of creation in Genesis. And as they are blessed by God, then they in turn are a blessing to this world and to us. They save our lives and they speak to us if we are willing to listen to them. Now, obviously they do not speak to us in human words, regardless of how many times you've watched a YouTube video saying, having a dog saying that it likes lasagna. No, animals speak to us in truths by their actions and their faithfulness, by their dedication, by their hard work, by their long time companionship and, free, and friendship and the unconditional love that they give to us. Animals may not talk with human speech, but they do affect our lives in many cases. And in some cases, they even save them. It doesn't take much of a Google search to read a lot of stories about animals saving human lives true stories, amazing stories, almost supernatural stories. Animals are blessed by God to be very good. And in doing so, they have been a very good blessing to us. Take the story of Winnie. Winnie is a 14 year old cat that saved the lives of her family when a gasoline powered water pump in her basement caused an odorless but deadly gas to fill the house. Winnie leapt onto her owner's beds and started jumping and nudging and meowing relentlessly as the house began to fill with the fumes. Winnie's meows were like wild screams and the couple got up and found their 14 year old son was unconscious. But because of Winnie's persistence, 9-11 got called and the family was treated and survived. Winnie, a 14 year old elderly cat, save the lives of her human family. Or take the story of jo Joanne the bunny that was given to a Marine who was living with severe PTSD and moral injury from his two tours serving in Iraq and being asked to do things on our behalf and his country that he knew was ethically and morally corrupt. After months of therapy, and after that months of therapy was not really helping him, his therapist encouraged him to get a therapy animal, but not just any therapy animal, a therapy animal that was fragile and soft and had to be completely dependent upon him. And so the Marine got Joanne, the bunny from a local farmer. And Joanne became, came, would come to his therapy sessions and slowly but surely as he stroked the bunny, and took care of the bunny, the marine soul and spirit that had been shattered by the immorality of humans began to be pieced back together by the unconditional love that he received from Joanne the bunny. The Joanne the bunny literally saved a marine's life. Or take the story of Baloo. Baloo is my own faithful German shepherd. Lou would come to me to my office at the church I served in Montana during the height of the neo-Nazi activity in that community. You may or may not remember, but I was a pretty outspoken leader in the Northwest Montana on behalf of inclusion and love and the neo-Nazis did not like me at all. So 
after some phone, some threatening phone calls, I decided to start bringing Baloo with me to church. And 99.9% of the time, whenever anyone would visit the church, friend, friend or stranger alike, Baloo would, would hear the door opening before I would and would dart to the, op- the front door and she would give out a hearty hello bark, but then quickly drop her ears back and her tail would wag, signaling her welcome and her joy at this new person being in her midst. But one day the door opened and Baloo heard it as normal before I did. And she raced to the front door to say hello but soon her hello bark quickly turned into a warning bark and then a stay back bark and stay where you are bark. And when I arrived to the North X of the church, Baloo was snarling and growling and puffed up like a wolf. And in front of her stood a man that I'd never seen before. And as much as I tried to calm Baloo down and, and, and she would not listen to me and no matter what command I gave her, she would not back down. And the stranger left once he realized that he was not gonna get any farther than the narthex. And then Baloo sat at that front door for a good long while until she was sure that this person was not coming back in. Two weeks later, on the front page of the Kalispell newspaper was the story of an ex-soldier who had been arrested for assault of a social worker in town who happened to be non-white. The ex-Marine was a known neo-Nazi and he had just moved to Montana to join the Nazi ranks. Baloo, my German shepherd, put herself between me and a man who was looking to do me harm. She saved my life because she could see the intent of this man that I could not. None of the the animals in any of these true stories could literally talk, but each of their acts of courage and love speak volumes to their faithful friendship and care for us and the way that they sacrifice for us. Balaam's donkey may not have actually spoken, but she is a vehicle by which we can hear God's work wonders through animals in our world. Each of these stories is just more and more evidence of what we know to be true, that animals continue to be blessed and then to bless us in so many big and small ways. And while none of us today have literally, while none of us today may have been literally saved from any known peril, the friendships and companionships that our pets and the animals certainly enrich our lives, speak to us about the love within creation that can and surely does transcend all species and has the power to save us. So on this blessing of the Animal Sunday, let us give thanks to God for the animals, for Balaam the donkey who saved his, her master from unseen threats, from the guide dogs who, 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 who save us from stepping into it, to, to, to Winnie, the elderly cat who, who shows such per, persistence to save others, the Joanne, the bunnies who can repair a broken soul, for Baloo, the German shepherds who bravely put themselves in harm's way to protect those they love. Let us give thanks to God for all of these stories and so many more that we can all share Stories both old and new that reveal to us what animals can teach us. For they are blessed to be very good and they would bless us if we would just listen. Happy blessing of the animals this day. Amen, amen, and amen. Friends, we now come to that time in our worship service where we remember those pets those beloved family members who have passed on before, who have gone over the proverbial rainbow bridge, if you will, and has been shepherded into paradise next to those still waters into the green meadows where they frolic and play with their creator God who created them in God's image and blessed them to be good, very good throughout the days of their lives. I know for me, my, my pets have been such a, beloved part of my family. Even remembering them today brings a melancholy to my heart and yet also lifts my spirits in the ways in which we enjoyed each other's companionship for for so many years. In a moment, you will have an opportunity to lift up the names of those pets that have gone on before that you would like to remember this day and give thanks to God for. 
I know I have lots of pets that I would love to remember this day. And so you're going to have a moment of silence and then we will chime three times as a, as a way to honor them and to remember them this day. Here uh, in, our, in our own space, I have placed some remembrances of some family members of my own. And I invite you to do the same wherever you may be this day. Underneath the shadow of the cross uh, and next to our proverbial rainbow bridge being shepherded by the patron saint of animals himself, St. Francis of Assisi, I have placed two paws of my beloved mem members of my family, Baloo, who you just heard about, and Aspen, who were such beloved members who I remember so fondly this day. So let us give thanks to God for the, those pets, those animals that have blessed us so much throughout our lives, first with the moment of silence, then with the ringing of the chimes, and then going to God in a word of prayer. Friends, let us now go to God in a word of prayer. Loving creator, holy God of us all, we give thanks for the gifts of these loving members of our family that you gave us and the variety of ways in which they enriched and blessed our lives. For our pets this day, O oh God, who have crossed the rainbow bridge, we pray with confidence that you, our creator, continue to care for them in paradise. This we pray in the name of your son, Christ Jesus, our rock and our redeemer, who was the good shepherd and all of God's children said, amen. Now friends, is the time that we've all been waiting for, the opportunity to thank God and to bless the animals in our lives this day and all the animals of the world. So let us go to God in a word of prayer. We're gonna begin with uh, a little adaptation that I did to a classic prayer from the patron saint of animals, St. Francis himself. Then we will transition into a general blessing for all the animals in our lives and all the animals of the world. Then following that, we will transition into a little thing that uh, will kind of remind you of what was going to be happening at church on Sunday morning uh, here on campus as we do individual blessings of the animals. Uh, one of our very own youth, Irie, brought a couple of her pets to youth group this past Wednesday night, and I got an opportunity to bless them. And that'll kind of be a way for us to wrap up our blessing of the animal service this day. So let us begin by going to God in a word of prayer. All dogs and cats, large and small, praise God. All rabbits, hamsters, and guinea pigs, praise God. All goldfish, guppies, and swimming creatures, praise God. All robins, wrens, and singing birds, praise God. All bats, squirrels, and raccoons, praise God. All horses, cows, and sheep, praise God. All lizards, snakes, and creepy things, praise God. All primates, gorillas, bonobos, and humans, praise God. Every animal in the sky, the sea, and the forest, praise God. Loving God, you hate nothing you made. Bless all the animals of the world, whom we enjoy as companions and fellow sojourners on this planet. Make us wise in our care for these beasts, the bunnies, the birds, the fish, the frogs, things that crawl, hop, run, fly, and swim. We praise you for all the animals you created, including those with no need of humans. We praise you for their freedom, and we pray to be, be wise in our stewardship of this earth, our common home. Bless all the animals of the earth this day, O oh God. We pray this in your son's holy name, our rock and our redeemer, Christ Jesus, and all of God's children said, Amen. Irie, what are the names of your pets that we're going to be blessing? 
This is Simba the snake and Big Bang Hank the hermit crab. Okay, let us go to God in a word of prayer. Loving God, we give you blessings and thanks for this beautiful day. You are the creator of all. I ask a blessing to be upon Irie and upon her snake Simba and her hermit crab Big Bang Hank. May they be blessed with a loving companionship. May Simba and Big Bang Hank be protected, and may they have a long life full of companionship and joy. We pray, pray this in your son's holy name, and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. And Irie, here is a certificate blessed, saying that your snake and hermit crab, Simba and Big Bang Hank, were blessed this day. Thank you for coming. Sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. You are my puppy, you are my kitty, you are my bunny, bird, and fish, my true companion. My dearest best friend, a prayer answered my deepest wish. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Friends, as our worship service comes to a close, it is Willow's hope, it is my hope this day that this service has been a blessing unto you, that a, a word, a song, a prayer has lifted your hearts, filled your spirits, and inspired you to go forth and listen to the animals as, uh, as a way to hear and glean God's wisdom for our lives and to learn from them this day, for they see things that we are unable to see uh, but as our worship service comes to a close, let us go to God one more time in a word of prayer. Sisters and brothers, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God's light and love and countenance shine upon you and guide your path through life. May you see God face to face and feel God in your heart this day as you behold the wonders of creation. May you receive the gift of grace, grace enough to risk something big for something good so that we may have a lasting peace today and all of our tomorrows. This we pray in the name of the God who was and is and will be forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen. Our worship service has come to an end, but our service now begins. Let us go out into the world and serve God and our neighbors with peace and love in our hearts.